Hey, homie. Tex. Down near the Pottery Highway. Start here. Is a man who can cut a side panel with acute precision. Even if his language. You ain't got enough time for me to tell you all the shit that went on. Is a little less so. <laughs> uh, man, there's Jake Elder, Dick Hutchison. There isn't a name in racing. Jack Sullivan and, and Mark Donahue. That he doesn't know. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, boy, he was good. God, he was good. Because Richie Bars has been married to the sport. That's me, Richie. Nearly as long as he has. She was Fox. To Eleanor. I got married at 6.30 in the morning to Catholic Church in Charlotte, and I did not miss the brake truck that day, which rolled through at 8.30. Are you still married? Yes, 53 years, the same <laughs> woman. That was just about the time that he was working on the number five car depicted in the new hit movie, Ford versus Ferrari. I will put you in the driver's seat at Le Mans. I worked on a car that finished third in the one, two, three suite. So I was there in 65 and 66. There, when Ford shocked the world by beating the greatest race cars known to man at that time. Mr. Ford, Ferrari has a message for you, sir. A couple of years earlier, Henry Ford II had Henry tried Ford to buy Ferrari. What did he say? He said Ford makes ugly little cars. But when Enzo Ferrari refused to sell, Ford... We're gonna bury Ferrari at Le Mans. ...vowed to beat him at his own game. And how long did you tell them you needed? Two or three hundred years? Ninety days. <laughs> oh, it was huge. It's probably one of the biggest deals that's ever, ever existed. Uh, Ford had spent all the money they had to try to beat Ferrari. I think they spent $26 million in the three years that I was involved. And won Le Mans four years in a row. Man. Richie Bars later became a legend with Richard Petty's NASCAR team, helping build championship cars. Moore's can't describe it. But when Ford went to war with Ferrari, Richie was just a young foot soldier. They had to know you didn't care if you worked seven days a week. The week of the race of Le Mans, I, I was on the clock for 105 hours. Too tired and maybe too young to be intimidated by the roar of the legendary Ferrari engines that he considered to be... Music. And the first guy would go wooden, the other guy would go wooden, and they would do like a symphony with the gas pedal with them. They would wooden, 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 wooden. So when it comes over here... And Richie comes and Tex line, Powell are now finishing a restoration of an original right Ford GT, remember. like the one at one at Le Mans, that a man named Daryl Townsend spent the end of his life working on. He'd worked on 30 years and he died of cancer. Part of the deal to get the car was that... Daryl would never fully leave the project. He's in that box there and stays with it. What's left of him does. There's something about building this thing from hand, man. This wasn't built by a machine. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Lock and load. As Richie and Tex put the finishing touches on their new version of the car. Are you okay with that? I think it's beautiful. They're not surprised that the ones they built half a century ago knocked the king off his throne. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. See, we did all the testing prior to that. A little American know-how and determination. And we said that was two inches. Found its way man, man. to Victory Lane. Yeah, that was good times. Bob Buckley. I mean, how does it get any better than that? Fox 8 News. Well, hell, that's going to work.